as well. The order of worship is posted each week on the parish website, ollparish.com. And also a reminder that during these uh, hours between the 8.30 Mass, I mean the 9 o'clock Mass and the 11.15 Mass, our parish nursery is open for children uh, six months through three years. So take advantage of that or at least pass the word to others that might uh, be able to come to Mass knowing that their children are being uh, uh, taken care of by professionals as well. Let's stand and greet one another. Happy St. Patty's Day. Our opening hymn is on the front page there, challenging us to take up our cross and follow the Lord. Let's take a moment of silence now and prepare our hearts to pray. Mm -hmm. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And you can find the penitential act at the top of page two in the order of worship. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to and you, my brothers and sisters. sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, 
May we walk eagerly in that same charity by which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. serves me must follow me says the Lord and where I am there will my servant be reading from the 12th chapter of the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loses his life, loves his life, loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You 
all could exact a title for this gospel. My hour has come. Now is the time. The Greeks, two of them who were converts to Judaism, wanted to see Jesus. They must have heard about his miracles. They probably heard that he drove money changers out of the temple. They probably heard that Jesus came into a don on a donkey into Jerusalem and they hailed him king of the Jews. In this context, he had already celebrated Palm Sunday. My hour has come was not the expectation they had that they would get from Jesus a cryptic and odd response. We just want to see Jesus. And he says, now is the time for the grain of wheat to fall into the ground and die so that it can bear fruit. For them it must have sounded very cryptic. Yes, now is the time. Time is to be made holy in a very real sense by Jesus Christ in the activity that we're going to celebrate from Palm Sunday and into Holy Week. How do we look at time? Do we think it's something to be sanctified? When I was first assigned to my parish after being in the monastery 37 years, I was at St. Helen in Junction City and I had my first mass with the assembly. The first thing I noticed was off on the wall on this side was an atomic clock. The next thing I noticed during my homily, people kept looking over at the clock. <laughs> a little disconcerting. My first action as a pastor, and they say don't make any major changes for a year, I moved that clock <laughs> to the back wall. Nobody would dare turn all the way around to look at the clock. Now you're going to check to see whether my homily is closer to five or 30 minutes. Later I was assigned to St. Henry and Gresham and given a parochial vicar, Father Crispin, who is now a wonderful pastor at Our Lady of Sorrows in Portland. He was from Kenya. We became fast friends, but I had to work on something. His punctuality. He gradually accustomed to understanding the nature of scheduling in the American culture. And one day he shared with me his excuse. He said, you know, Americans have clocks and watches. Africans have time. We honor the journey a little more, perhaps, and the relationship. So I told Father Crispin, I'll work on both of them if you will too. <laughs> and then he told me, and you know something, in Swahili there's no word for hurry. I said, you've made your point, and very well. <laughs> Today we look at the sacredness of time, but only if we sanctify it. Yes, Jesus' hour has come, so has our hour come. Jesus makes it clear. I want you to serve me. And that means you need to also be a priestly sacrifice in service and follow the holy will of the Father. But even knowing all of that, 
Jesus anticipated the pain he was going to endure during Holy Week. He said, I am troubled now. His human nature wasn't looking forward to him being the grain of wheat to fall to the ground and die. But he was going to accomplish it anyway because even the voice heard that day by his assembly, I will glorify you. I will glorify you. It was the Father speaking. So we are asked to consider our call. And I'd like to share one true story and one parable with you about how we might respond to the call for the hour that we are to spend in making sacred our time. The first is a true story from the 18th century. Count Nikolaus Ludwig von Zinzendorf, you'll be tested on the name, was a very wealthy count in Dresden. He was a pious man. One day he went to Dusseldorf and someone said, you've got to go to the art gallery. And he did. He walked through all of the paintings and the displays and one caught his eye. It was a painting of Jesus Christ right after he had been flogged and scourged and wearing a crown of thorns. He was in agony and pain and his eyes looked out from the painting, piercing eyes and mesmerized Count Zinzendorf. The name of the painting was Ecce Homo, Behold the Man by Domenica Fetti. And after an hour or two of just staring at the eyes, he noticed underneath in Latin were the words, Hoc feci prote, quid fecit pro me. This is what I have done for you. What have you done for me? What have you done for me? It changed his life. He realized he hadn't responded to that question in his life and became one of the premier evangelizers in Europe. The other is a parable of a woman who was a wonderful shopper. She was a primo shopper. She was walking one day down the street and saw this wonderful storefront, just had to go in. Came up to the counter and saw that Jesus was behind the counter. She asked the obvious question, so Jesus, do you work here? And Jesus says, no, I own the store. But you're welcome to go up and down the aisle and pick anything you would like. She did that and she made a list of the th six things she wanted because she realized it was a catalog store, much like the old Sears and Roebuck. She came back to the counter and said, here are the six items I want. I want peace in the world, no more war. I want peace in families. I want an end to hunger. I want an end to addiction. And finally, I would like a careful use of our natural resources. And Jesus says, I've got just the items for you. Handed her six packets of seeds, one for each of the items she wanted. All you have to do is plant them and nurture them, and maybe even in your lifetime, you will see the results of the seed. She said, I don't have time. I'm not interested. 
and she walked away. Much like the disciples who heard Jesus say, I must go to Jerusalem to suffer and die and to achieve what my Father has sent me for. Too hard a saying, and those disciples turned their back and walked away. Yes, this is the hour of Jesus. He wishes it to be our hour too. He doesn't walk alone. We don't walk alone. We must understand that we need to die. Sacrificial love. Not always pleasant. That's why even Jesus says, but I am troubled now. Can be painful. The flip side of the corn of sacrifice, the coin is love. They go hand in hand. Ask any couple. We look at salt, the crystal salt we take for granted. But you know, salt has no taste unless it dissolves in water, even on our tongue. These candles right here can give no light unless the wick burns and the wax melts. This is what Jesus says when he asks us to come and serve him and to be like that grain of wheat that must die, be buried, and rise and be glorified. To be glorified. So today, we look for a new covenant in our hearts. Be involved in that priestly sacrifice of Jesus Christ for priestly service accomplishing the will of God. And now you may look at your watch. Let us stand and profess our faith, and you'll find the Apostles' Creed on page 5. We use the Apostles' Creeds during Lent. As, uh, it's the creed used in the uh, testimony of faith for those when they are baptized. Top of page 5 altogether. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confident in God's compassion, we offer our prayers now for the church and for the world. For the church, may the Eucharist always be a source and summit of the church's life and ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in Ukraine and the Holy Land, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect and the candidates for full communion in the church, may the seeds of the gospel buried deep within them yield a rich harvest of prayer, faith, and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and lay ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or homebound, 
May they know the gentle touch of God's healing love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they know the glory of God and may their families and loved ones be comforted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our book of intentions and those we hold now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for today's Mass intention for the repose of the soul of Judith Lynch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And also for the repose of the soul of Father Gordon Moreland, a Jesuit priest who served very generously much of his time here in Oregon in gratitude for his priestly service that he may receive the fullness of life in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear these prayers which we humbly offer and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And thank you for your ongoing financial support of the parish for the bringing of our first fruits to God in service to his kingdom. As we prepare the gifts, let's sing together on this St. Patrick's Day as well, on page six, the breastplate of St. Patrick.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And be prepared on page 8 of the order of worship for the Latin Mass parts. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Father Almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to rather hold to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end and as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao, Pleni sunt Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua. Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini. Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in, to, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things to himself through his blood to be shed upon the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei Mortem tuam Annunciamus Domine, et tuam resurrectionem. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. And grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us in communion, if mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, Peter, his auxiliary bishop, and help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing with you, sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's <laughs> peace. On you stay. Quitolis pecata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, quitolis pecata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, quitolis pecata mundi, Dona nobis pacem.
during the communion procession, there'll be two Eucharistic ministers at the back of the church near the baptismal font. Those in the final rows can come to the center aisle and head that way and return to your seats by the side aisles. Please join in our communion hymn right from today's gospel, Unless a Grain of Wheat, on page 8.
Let's continue our prayer with the Jesus song. I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Let us pray. We pray, almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to introduce Gary Hannafan of the Knights of Columbus to say a few words about that great organization. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. On March 28, 1954, the International Knights of Columbus chartered a new council here at Our Lady Lake Parish, Council 3818. As we approach our 70th anniversary, we look back and look forward 
to celebrating the night's service in our parish here at Our Lady Lake. I have props. In the bulletin, you can see our, uh, there's an overview of the service uh, that approximately 160 men in the parish who are registered uh, carry out every year. These men work towards three main principles. And I'd like to share with you those three principles. And if you're interested in those activities, you might want to consider joining the Knights of Columbus. And there's a, a joining form at uh, each of the entrances. So the first one is service through charity. So those are things like coats for kids or uh, raising money for Father Taft's home for unwed mothers. St. Vincent de Paul Society, over 16,000 sack lunches for the, uh, um, for the Mercy Teams, sponsoring seminarians in Mount Angel, and our work with St. Mary's Boys Home. In addition to this, the second area is unity through faith. Members participate, lead, and volunteer in men's retreats, men's Exodus 90 groups, small, group Bible study, youth faith formation, and of course putting up the Christmas lights and the outdoor crash. And the third area is building community through fraternity, bringing Our Lady Lake Parish together through events like the night's uh, breakfast and burrito sales, the boys and girls free throw event, pumpkin carving for kids, and in the spirit of this, in the spirit of community building, we will be holding an all parish dance on April 6th. It'll be a dinner and a dance, wonderful uh, menu with tri-tip and all the fixings. Please join your fellow parishioners to celebrate the 70 years and to celebrate the unity of the parish. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Gary, and thank you, the Knights of Columbus. 70 years of, of service. I think what's unique, it's 70 years and still very active. Um, also, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't wish you all a very happy St. Patrick's Day. See a lot of green out there. I've got it here on my sleeve. So. Um, and my, my family is Irish. I'm Irish on my father's side. And of course, the main thing that St. Patrick is known for is the evangelization of Ireland. I mean, that's our Catholic heritage dates back to then. And so uh, we have this great stained glass window up back here by, behind the piano of St. Patrick holding the shepherd's staff in one hand and the shamrock in the other. And uh, every day at daily mass, uh, when I depart from the altar and genuflect at the tabernacle, then as I walk into the sacristy, I look at St. Patrick, who was the evangelist, and I wink at him and say, let's go get him. You know, so that's... <laughs> We're part of that mission too, every one of us, to call, to, to proclaim the light of Christ through our lives and our actions and our words. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O oh Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by, the, by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And just a reminder that the confirmation candidates, you have your session having over in the school uh, cafeteria. There's lunch for you first, and then there is coffee and donuts downstairs for us with our new coffee machine and lots of donuts, and we need a hand, so if somebody can head on down and help get things out, that'd be great. Save Your People is on the inside cover of the back page. So we're singing verse one. 